right, welcome to Cryptic Corner, my beauties and bees. It's time for some uh, fierce feline action tonight. And that could not have been more perfect to have that be the um, part of my background that popped up just there. Just see that where the, the it was the from the British Big Cats where it had the uh, house cat turning into the big cat. Because British Big Cats are something we've covered already um, a couple of times. And we're not done with them because, uh, yeah, every little... It seems like every little, uh, little moorland in, uh, am I insinuating them? Well, I'm talking more about the cat's cougars than that I am a cougar. Um, though I did go on a, uh, on a date with a 26 year old, if that counts, if that makes me a cougar, that's the youngest I will, uh, I will date though. Um, I think that's. That's plenty young for me, um, so I would not, uh, dating someone in, the tw in their 20s in general is kind of, mm, I don't know, because I, I don't know how much I could relate to them, honestly. I, yeah, that was that was why it didn't really work out with the 26-year-old, because there wasn't a lot that we had in common other than, well, anyway, let's, uh, let's see here. So yes, the thumbnail, uh, it might be, this might be my favorite thumbnail that I've used so far, um, it, it might, <laughs> it might be just because that insinuation, I thought it was cute. Um, plus my, this, that's the, that's the picture where, cause, uh, where my, where my, uh, boobs look the best, I think <laughs> as far as so far yet, but, uh, we'll see what the, uh, the H, uh, RT, uh, does for him moving forward. I'm you know what 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 may what may come right all right uh let's see here so back to the topic at hand and why this relates to genetics and how uh different characteristics take hold in uh in uh different populations before i get like literally into the topic i just want to share uh share something really quick because in preparing for this i ended up doing a having a, a like a nostalgia gasm check this out this is a, a website like from the like when i was this thing's been around oh, i don't even know since at least the early 2000s i think the late 90s is when i really started uh you can tell this is like a like an early internet site right you can tell by looking at it uh, the way the, the layout and uh, the color schemes and uh, kind of boxy and yeah, but you get, you get the uh, the impression that uh, that this is an old site and it really is. Uh, I've always been into this kind of stuff and I always really liked the uh, the strange cat sightings and strange like it'll be. Completely normal, nothing out of the ordinary about the interaction, except for the the cat will be like white or blue or or some exotic color, or how or it'll be a, you know, a cheetah with with uh, with stripes or things like that. I was always so into those when I was. Yeah, we will have a forty a fortieth stream, I'm sure. Um, if I decide to turn 40, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't made that decision yet. I may have to, uh, renegotiate my, my pact with, uh, with Dark Brandon and see what we can, what we can make happen. I'm definitely going to need more boobs, uh, if I'm going to turn 40. So hopefully by then I'll have more boobs. <laughs> so yeah, this is Messy Beast. It was like someone's, uh, website where they where they talked about cats and animals and uh, had, you know, photos. And they were into the same kind of stuff that I was into. Like, obviously, this was, you know, 20-some years ago. I don't know if this thing is maintained or anything like that. But the information's still out here. And it was uh, great because I needed to, the, the, again, the nostalgia from looking back at my childhood, I needed these pictures. And, uh, yeah, and I came in here and, and there it was. Because the, the cool thing about this site is that it has this, um hybrids and mutant animals section which talks about all the different hybrids that have been produced between 
this for instance uh yeah this it has a whole section with felids because felids create this crazy spectrum of um well of evolution because the way that they can breed together between felis and uh panth panthera um or fe uh what's the word i'm looking for panthera felina anyway yeah um but between big cats and small cats because there's uh the cougars uh <laughs> the, the, the pumas if you will create this nice little bridge between the groups but that's going to come up again here and as we move through this section but i just wanted to show you the site that i used <clears throat> and this stuff i mean uh it's not this isn't like a peer review site or anything <clears throat> it's a it's a someone who's a fan of uh of animal genetics and hybridization uh they they keep up on it at least enough to keep up with uh with roller bears which i think that was 2012 or something like that that we that those were discovered in the wild which is a hybrid between a polar bear and a, and a brown bear or grizzly bear um and that was more I, I think that was more recent wasn't it when was okay so they these are the ones that were produced in captivity though this isn't about this isn't the topic on hand. I'm just trying to show you the kind of stuff that uh, that they do without, uh, honestly, without spoiling because they use this uh, without spoiling my slides <laughs> that I put together. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is the site and it's pretty cool. I uh, I like it and and then they have the mutant felines where this is where what we're getting into today. We have things like black jaguars and black pumas so today in cryptic corner we are focusing on uh cryptic felines so as far as cryptic felines go south america might be the motherland right that might be the absolute best place to start talking about these creatures because south america while well, being rife with uh, with actual large cats um, that vary in, in shade and color, I mean, more than anywhere else in the world, uh, there are uh, three of the cats on the screen right now uh, have more variety in their shade than any other cats in the world besides the Indian leopard. So there's three big cats... Uh, and I say big cats loosely because the puma and the jaguar undy are not technically big cats. Um, but the jaguar in the upper left, the uh, cougar in the lower left, the jaguar undy in the lower right, uh, all have a variety of color morphs. Uh, obviously, jaguars can be com uh, completely black. I mean, we know this. Uh, they have a, uh, it's a actual dominant gene in their in their genetics that uh so when a male has the black genes or the genes to be to, to pass that on his baby he's going to spread that everywhere because it's a it's dominant it's not recessive and if two black or, and, and the thing about it is with uh with jaguars the way their genetics work is that if uh a uh, black in a, in a uh, tawny jaguar reproduce. They produce a charcoal black jaguar. Um, that is the black jaguars that you can kind of still see the, the pattern showing through a bit. If two charcoal blacks or a charcoal black and a true black, or if, if they breed together, they will produce a full black. No, you won't, you won't be able to see maybe just the, the faintest of, uh, of, pattern like in uh regions around maybe the the muzzle and stuff like that but you won't see looking at the body it'll look like velvet black like like straight black like in indian leopard tend, tend to look um now in indian leopards the gene is actually recessive so it doesn't uh it doesn't spread and is not nearly as common as it is in the jaguar population however uh the Tawny colors also have a sort of a, a range from a, a, a buff cream base 
to a uh, almost deep orange base and the rosettes because uh, Jaguars don't have spots per se. They have, well, they do have spots on, on like their face and their limbs and stuff, but their body, those are called rosettes. Those big, uh, look like uh, semi-circles that are darker on the inside. Those are called rosettes and a lot, a lot of felines um, develop those, uh, including the, the ocelot, which you see right here to the, uh, to the right of the Jaguars. And we're going to talk about them in a moment as well. But, uh, there's a just this range of color between uh, the known known color morphs of jaguars. Okay, we need to keep that in mind when we're talking about this. Below, uh, we see the the cat with the the largest range on Earth. Um, the the cougar uh, ranges over uh, two continents. We're going to focus on the South American populations today because we've talked we've talked twice at least. I know about the the North American populations. And I was just on Blake's channel the other night talking about, uh, about the Ozark cougars our black cougars. So if you didn't, didn't see that it's, it's in my catalog. It, it just, I think it was Tuesday night. I released it, but go check it out. We talked about a new sighting of a black cougar in Missouri. Really cool stuff. I know, uh, it was down in Minnow's neck of the woods is Minnow out there in the chat. I thought I saw her anyway. Um, so, but the, Cougars, uh, the, the scientific name for a cougar is Panthera con color. Now, what does con color mean? It means <laughs> uh, just every every color. It means all the colors uh, uh, because con color is is basically saying the colorful puma um, because they do, they do range in it from a, a wide variety of colors. Um, so uh, within, oh, that's not the right slide. Here we go. Yeah, within pumas, we do know a few things about their about their different color morphs that are confirmed. Okay, so let's look at what we have here. So pumas can come in an albino. These are all from South America. Uh, depending on what area they live in, these these. Alter in North America, there is there's there's color variety too, and we will we will talk about that at some point. But these cats live again from the, the from Alaska to down to the tip of uh, of South America. So yeah, down to the to Drake's Pass. <laughs> yeah, they're from from the Northwest Passage down to Drake's Pass. So they have a huge range. Now. What you see here again, we have one with albinism. This is this one's in Brazil, uh, in the upper left. We, then you have uh, one with uh, with darker spots in the upper right. Now, pumas get darker differently than uh, than like leopards or jaguars do. When yeah, I'm going for the uh, Ryan good to see you uh, anyway um, so they go when a puma gets uh, gets darker they, they turn more they, they go red first or rusty uh, color now you can see that coming out in these spots here now when pumas are babies they they have spots so uh, when when they retain them like this it's actually a neoteny where it's something something of their uh, of their juvenile traits pull forward through adulthood. Now, uh, pumas in, that, that have this uh, coloration or, or the uh, neonatic trait, uh, they're not they're not a different color morph, I guess. They just they 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 have a little bit of their kitten uh, coat still showing through. And, it, it, and in montane areas, it'll be lighter, but they can still retain this darker color. Now, in this one. Uh, this one actually has a vitiligo, which is like the condition where you have the, the non-pigmented areas uh, where all the where all the melanin's been stripped away on your face or body. Uh, humans can get this too. It's it's not common. I think it's actually pretty when humans have it. It's like a uh, almost like a palomino look. It's really 
I think uh, I've seen some beautiful people with this condition. Um, anyway, and I like that you can see on this specimen as well that the uh, the darkness, this is how they darken, right? So I want you to look at this when you look at this picture because it's claimed that this one was black, but uh, assessments of the black and white photograph, which makes it problematic in and of itself, don't give it any indication why that it that it wouldn't be more of this color on the body, just maybe this darker color over more of an, an area. Uh, because yeah, pumas go more red uh, when they when they get when they they pass on those darker genes or when those take hold in the population. So yes, um, but let's. Uh, Let's go back up because I wanted to talk about these three. Okay, but first I wanted to mention the the other two cats here as well because we do need to talk about them because they are going to be important to the topic. Um, the to the right of the puma is its the only member of its uh, of its the shared genus puma is the jaguarundi. So. These two cats are in the same, they're, they're grouped together. Uh, and they do have a lot of similarities in their morphology and their coloration uh, because Jaguarundis also run the gamut from a, uh, a buff color to a buff to, or even gray, like gray color to a dark, almost black or, uh, or bright or almost red, red orange they do actually get darker than their puma cousins though they get do get dark enough that it could uh that it could be considered a uh a light a lighter shade of black i suppose but uh pictures of the black ones are kind of few and far between i liked this picture here because it showed a couple of different color morphs side by side so you can see the variety now above we have the ocelot right now the ocelot is not as uh is varied in its in its patterns it does have um some pantherine like characteristics to it though that that just add it to the mix of because ocelots are fairly large they're you know, roughly like bobcat size so these are the these are these four are, are probably the biggest um Guess the ocelot has some little, uh, uh, or I shouldn't say the ocelot has. The South America has some smaller spotted cats. The two of them actually like that look almost identical to the ocelot, but they're they're smaller. The the, the uh, margay and then the uh, margay is one size down, like slightly bigger than a uh, than a house cat. And then there's the oncilla, which is slightly smaller than a house cat. So. Um, yeah, there's so there's a variety of stripes, or striped and spotted in this case because the uh, the margay and the ocelot can both have stripes. I'm not sure about the oncilla, but they, they they can join together and make stripes. And the same the same mutations as like a king cheetah has, I believe. Um, and stripes will be coming up again. Okay, so that just adds this variety into the to the indigenous populations who had lived with these things for thousands of years and they had their own systems of categorizing them and classifying them and what what was what kind of cat that they that they've encountered and it's different than the way that we ended up doing it um as as westerners but uh I, and we weren't we weren't necessarily right either i don't want to give that impression that oh yeah uh, this was the silly savages you know not knowing how to categorize things and then the mighty whiteys came and categorized things right no we they had their own system based on uh on size color and um behavior so a black chill jaguar was a different species to them than like a angry spotted jaguar for instance or rosetta jaguar um so they, they just have uh different different classings like that and why wouldn't they it was they was made it easier to interact with the world to know that you know this these traits uh 
come with these behaviors or whatever, even if they, they weren't holding water and they were anecdotal, that's what they had to go on. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with those classification systems. And we, as, uh, as Westerners, did come in, and I take responsibility of saying, by, by saying we because, you know, my people were, were white. All my people are white. And uh, they did uh, come here and say, oh, well, we don't like your classification, so we're going to classify. Anyway, and then we used our own, which were also, you know, equally as, uh, as obtuse and didn't, uh, didn't really fit what was actually happening in nature and uh, confused the matter by creating, by lumping some groups together or, as one group and then dividing other dividing groups and it didn't it took genetics it took zoology becoming a thing you know it took it took decades for us to sort this out it wasn't western uh, culture it wasn't uh indigenous culture they had their own reasons for both groups the indigenous and the western society had their own reasons for classifying felines the way they did but uh, then science comes along and now we have genetics and you know, morphology and things like that that we can use to determine how these groups are related. Uh, but I do want to just uh, preface by uh, also saying that the only member of uh, Panthera on here is the jaguar. All of the rest of these are small cats. Um, and that is going to be uh, a, a point as we move along. Okay, so... These are the three things I want to focus on today. Um, I could go a lot deeper. There are other mystery cats in uh, South America. And I actually had to narrow this down because there's dozens of them. Um, again, you know, each, each people group had their own, own ways of classifying this. So that, that creates a cryptid for every, every cat. <laughs> it creates at least one cryptid, if not more. <laughs> for every cat for every people group um but there were ones that were reported and witnessed by early explorers and uh known in indigenous classification systems and even in early western classification systems that just disappeared without a trace uh we're going to look at uh at three of those here which uh starting at the bottom front is our black mystery cat. And there's a couple of reasons why this animal is. And what did, what did Ryan ask? Is anyone smoking? Do I have to smoke alone? <laughs> um, I don't usually uh, smoke on uh, Live from the Hive, but yeah, I do. I do enjoy uh, marijuana and it helps mellow my mood. So I will be having some uh probably my intermission i'll have one but <laughs> you won't be smoking alone babe all right uh so the the black cat we're gonna we're gonna dive into and there's reasons uh, why it's front and center because it's probably the most phenomenal uh then we have the striped jaguar which is a jaguar with uh with tiger-like stripes so and then at last, we'll have uh, the white and speckled jaguar as well. So, the Brazilian cat was a uh, was a story written by Arthur Arthur Conan Doyle, um, Sherlock Holmes, all that good stuff about a mystery cat from Brazil that someone had received. And I'm gonna. Where's my excerpt from that? Just a second. I had the excerpt I was going to read. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> Let me actually take a drink real quick. Some people called it a black puma, but really it is not a puma at all. That fellow is nearly 11 feet from the tip of, to the tail. Four years ago, he was a little ball of black fluff with two yellow eyes staring out of it. He was sold to me as a newborn cub up in the wild country at the headwaters of the Rio Negro. They speared his mother to death after she had killed a dozen of them. The most absolutely treacherous and bloodthirsty creature upon earth. You talk about a Brazilian cat, 
to an upcountry Indian and see him get the jumps. They prefer human to game. This fellow has never tasted living blood yet. But when he does, he'll be a terror. So, the Brazilian cat uh, is a fictional creature. But it's based on, uh, at the time that, that Arthur Conan, Conan Doyle was writing this story, it was a Western classification of, of cat. We just didn't... Uh, uh, it didn't have the specimens, but it was believed that it was there. It was in it was in the the literature. It was in the uh, in the field reports, right? That these Brazilian cats that are uh, big and fierce uh, exist in somewhere in the depths of the uh, of the Amazon. Now, or yeah, not just the Amazon, of course, but that's what people think of. Uh, at least Western society thinks of when they think of the far off reaches. And we have people like Percy Fawcett of the famous Lost Fawcett Expedition, who, um, yeah, it does sound like a black jaguar, um, like a melanistic jaguar to me as well. But, uh, yeah, uh, called the Savage Black Panther is what Percy Fawcett called it. Um, and he actually talked to Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle about uh, about this, his experiences, and that's kind of where the origins come from. I mean, the Lost World is a lot of that is based on on Fawcett's uh, accounts because I guess him and uh, him and Fawcett sat down over I don't know tea and a pipe and chatted about uh, different different devilish cats now. Again, this is a work of fiction based on what was thought to be real at the time. Now, uh, one of the, the most famous cryptozoologists, you know, other than myself, of course, because I'm, I'm the most famous cryptozoologist, maybe? At least the most famous cryptozoologist on uh, Atheist YouTube. So, was it a... In the story, you can't really make an inference that it was anything other than a fictional cat, right? I mean, a ring saying it does sound like a... It's a scaled-up jaguar, because there's not... Finding an 11-foot jaguar would be... A, that'd be a beast. Um, but jaguars do get huge. I mean, they're a, a big uh, panadal jaguar from uh, the southern portion of, the, of South America, where they live more... On, in open grasslands like lion territory, they get as big as, uh, as as big as a female lion. They don't get as big as the male lion, the male tiger. But jaguars are the third biggest cat in the world, and they yeah they are only they're only outsized by the lion and the tiger, and in, and then with the within those groups there are subspecies of tiger that are smaller than than uh, the larger subspecies of jaguar, and there are subspecies of uh, of lion, or in most, I think most sub most subspecies of lions, the females are smaller than your average, uh, or than your than your larger jaguars. Anyway, jaguars are huge. Make no mistake about it. And uh, th like a big fish story, a lot of these a lot of these cats are probably coming down to us. But this uh, gentleman called uh, Carl Shucker puts together great blogs. If you don't know. Who that is? He's a cryptozoologist. Um, just call, I think it's just called the you know, let me see the, Shucker Nature, S H U K E R Nature, and he he's a skeptical, a more skeptical minded uh, cryptozoologist like myself. He's not uh, believing that all these things are um, real phenomena, but they are anomalous phenomena that we do do we should look into. Um, but anyway. Moving on from the Brazilian cat, uh, which was based on accounts of this creature. This is the Anca canguaca. Canguaca, uh, I guess is how you say that. Which is a alleged large cat. It's got big-headed jaguars. The name for it is a white-throated jaguar because it has, I guess, the bib the the bib and of white is what distinguishes it from from jaguars and it's uh, allegedly larger than them of course it is because they're always larger crypt has got to be larger the cool thing about the this particular uh 
big black cat of South America is. There's actually some physical evidence for it. Right here. Uh, this is uh, Mark Van uh, Roosmalen. Now, he is not just some crackpot, of course. He's a... Uh, or is he? Because he's got a um, few species named after him. He's discovered some some large fauna. He's not uh, not just like oh, cryptozoologist wackadoo or anything like that. He has a species of peccary, which is the South American answer to pigs. He has a species of peccary named after him, and he has this. Now, it's not big, but it's adorable. This this marmoset named after him, this little little bitty monkey. Um, but he also has, as you can see, a collection of bizarre pelts given to him by hunters and indigenous peoples, um, and skulls and jaws and things like that um, of the said specimens. And in the, in this collection, he does have the white throated uh, black jaguar. Um, which would be fantastic if it turned out to be anything other than just a regular black jaguar. Now, you can see on the pelt here, uh, down directly below Mark in the picture on the right, the white patch right there. I'm trying to figure out what you're saying here, Ring. Which, which part is it this guy's name that I'm saying wrong? Oh, the, uh, the cat, yeah, it's a, it, the, yeah, the name of the, of the cat was, oh, you're saying so, Onsa, Onsa, I gotcha, okay, Onsa, um, I actually, I always, I always said Onka, I guess it's because when we, when we translate, because that's the word that's like, jaguars are Panthera Onka. I, and I think that may be because they westernized it. That's an awful dark color for a cougar monkey for banana. Look how that's black. There's not even any rose it's showing through or anything. That's black, black. Uh, if that if this would be, if this was a cougar, that'd be an equally phenomenal find, right? This skull certainly doesn't look like a cougar skull to me. This definitely looks like a jaguar skull. Look at that. Look at this um, arch right here. That's ro way too robust for a, for a cougar. Um, I think the carnassals are too big for a cougar too. I mean, feel free to... I, I definitely, Monkey Ever Banana, I love arguing with you about uh, phylogeny and animals. You know that. So, obviously, come at me, right, um, if I'm wrong about something. But, yeah, you can see the white patch on the throat right there. So, there is actually physical evidence of of this uh, of this organism existing, right? Uh, and he has it in his collection still. But he's got other wild ideas, too. There's a... A gi you know what a giant anteater is, right? They're like a like a human-sized anteater that lives in South America, and they're in they're they're huge, they're beast. Because um, a human-sized anteater has uh, arms like a freaking grizzly bear, right? It's a human-sized anteater with arms like a grizzly bear. <laughs> and Mark, yeah, it's definitely a big cat skull. The skull, this this skull is supposed to go with that pelt. Um, MFB. It's uh, in the white with the white patch on the chest. So that's a that that's a pantherine skull if I've ever seen one. Not a feline skull, a pantherine. Um, yeah, but he has a he has a theory about a arboreal giant anteater or a uh, sightings of arboreal uh, giant anteaters, which would be crazy. That'd be because uh, he says it's the same size as the as a giant anteater, so that'd be like a orangutan sized. I don't know how it would sustain itself arborally. I, are there enough? Saber tooth tigers went extinct in the Great Flood. Well, we're about to get to some of them that survived the flood, like uh, also like the dinosaurs in the Congo. So I think that uh, that. 
Noah must have had some on the ark with the dinosaurs because some of them still exist in the in, in the uh, alleged jungles of South America. Oh, don't get, want to get ahead of myself. All right, so in addition, oh, so I got my slides all out of order trying to fix something this morning, and now they're that's all right. Y'all see what I'm looking at. So. In addition, I'm not just gonna just gonna put the uh, the the onsa, which thank you again for the the language correction. The onsa, uh, kinguasa, or kingusu, I guess it would be kingusu, because that c makes a s sound. That's kingusu, onsa, kingusu. Yeah, I like that though. That sounds a lot better than the way I was saying it. Onsa, kingusu. Now. <laughs> yeah we do i know that's uh how and we and they're supposed to do that with binomial nomenclature to uh to westernize it uh it is a little bit gross it, it makes it funny because this this guy in, in particular because his last name is is dutch there's all there's all kinds of by because uh, he has species named after him uh a few i think like two or three named after him and then he's named even more and named him after other people but uh he actually had you know, they have trouble with that because depending on whether yeah i don't know there's there's two ways to uh to to translate dutch a dutch name to uh to binomial nomenclature and they argue about it it's just a weird thing but there's uh, in addition to the for, to this creature there's also a, something called the yana puma uh, there's like, it's essentially just a black mountain lion that's very similar to them to the black mountain lions that we see uh in the rest of the of the mountain lions ranges uh you know as they we move into north america and uh obviously the darkest mountain lions that we know of are in tropical regions uh northern brazil and uh ecuador places like that that's where we see a lot of those sightings at. Um, obviously, melanistic jaguars also are found throughout this range um, in, at lower elevation. Generally, a good rule of thumb in South America is higher elevation cougar, lower elevation um, jaguar. But it's not a hard, fast rule. And uh, jaguars would tend to dominate where the two species uh, come into conflict. And so the jaguar would sculpt the cougar's range essentially and maybe even push them in, into different niches which is why where their ranges overlap cougars also tend to be a great deal smaller um and yeah the yana puma though is not smaller it's the same size as a jaguar but it's a puma <laughs> of course it's giant they always have to be giant it can't just be a different color right um and I always take the giant notion as just the part, the, the, the witness bias uh, that they're like, oh, it had to be a giant, right? Anyway, so that's the uh, the the big black kitties. Now we're going to move on to to the striped ones because the fun thing about South America is that with all its diversity in, in felines, there aren't too many that are striped. That's why I brought up the uh, the ocelot earlier because they tend to be more striped like or stripe adjacent <laughs> and uh the striped cats aren't always aren't always reported as giant don't get me wrong they are reported as giant in some cases but uh generally speaking they are either reported as a little slightly smaller or or a bit uh, bigger, but or a bit bigger than a puma. But uh, let's let's see here. So the first one we'll talk about is the rainbow tiger. So let me pull that up. I have I have my notes. Bear with me, but they're all over the place. That's not it. And. There we are. Rainbow 
tiger. Nope. Please don't tell me I closed it. That's all right. We're going to pull it back up. Just give me a second. I see the other ones, though, so I got the other three on here. I did have it up. It's just the name of it that's weird. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> that's why I put Rainbow Tiger on here. It has an indigenous name that's uh, that Bree's gonna struggle with. So you guys get the uh, get the Westernized name. I'm gonna be a dirty colonizer and not try to mispronounce the indigenous name on that one because you thought that I butchered the Onsa. With it comes to the yeah, but actually let me try it because I'm I'm true to my word. And you guys like to listen to me try to <laughs> translate it, uh, and let me I'm gonna copy and paste the pronunciation and or the spelling into the chat here so you guys can see what I'm uh, what I'm talking about. It's Tshin Tshink Tshinkat Shin Tshinkatin. Chintikin. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm a dirty colonizer. Uh, I just colonized their language, too, by putting it into my filthy, uh, filthy white lips. <laughs> anyway, so this one was smaller. It lived in the trees, um, and it was uh, striped, but it was its body was, was different colors. It went from, uh, from white it had a uh, pale face then uh, a darker uh, gray or black mane then a white midsection with where the stripes were most dominant and then a uh, darker hindquarters with a striped tail now this was often compared to the uh, coloration of a t of a tapir so it was like a uh, striped cat with a tapir coloration uh i don't know that i that i see that but uh yeah and then we had the peruvian tiger which is uh also kind of linked hand in hand with the anomalous jaguar now before i get to those because those ones are going to be super juicy i want to just take a quick second to acknowledge the saber tooth on the screen uh, the Tigre, uh, yeah, Tigre Dantero. I did pronounce that right, ring, so stoke it. <laughs> Shin Kushin. I like it. Look at the trees. Make it stick. Let's do it. All right, so Tigre. Yeah, so. This one is fun because it has a lot, a lot of sightings. That's the one in the lower, um, the lower right here. Now it's yeah, basically uh, uh, considered to be a saber-toothed creature, or maybe even a sparsodon, uh, which were these. Uh, they're not so. Oh goodness, sparsodons. Okay, how to explain this? So sparsodons were Gondwana land creatures. Okay, so Gondwana land was, uh, you had South America, uh, Australia, and Antarctica. And it split off from Gondwana, which had Africa, Madagascar, and India included in there too. So after that split off, um, in isolation, marsupials were really pot, were really, I say almost really popular, really populous. Um, in the region and sparsodonts were a sister clade to marsupials that also did kind of well in this in, in this biome once they were isolated from the from the placental mammals and were able to to dominate this niche they did really really well and sparsodonts and marsupials have a lot of things in common uh but they have sparsodonts have things in common with placental mammals too so they are a group of their own kind of offset but they were good at in this predatory niche uh, niche now when uh gondwana land broke up south america became an island and was isolated and these guys moved into the dominant predator niche and they had 
a heyday. They loved it. They uh, uh, became like almost the equivalent of carnivora to South the South American con- continent. They weren't quite as dominant because they had other. Um, the, the, at the, I mean, they, they and when they were isolated on this island, there were other the other pre- large predator niches were dominated by huge reptiles and, and giant birds too. So these guys were contending with, yeah, huge reptiles and giant birds. So um, they didn't quite dominate as, as heavily as carnivora did because carnivora wiped everything else out, everything else that was competing with it. But since it didn't have a stronghold in South America until after the connection with North America, sparsodonts filled that niche and they had their own giant uh, macro predator and the ambush predator in the in the cat niche, uh, sparsodont, which was called the sparsodont, which was called uh, uh, thylos thylosmelus, um, which yeah, it basically means marsupial saber tooth cat. Um, but it wasn't exactly like a cat. That's just analogous with the cat. Sin Coot Sin is what Brian Stevens says in the pronunciation of that. I love my my side chat. You guys are so smart. Um, yeah, but anyway, these uh, these big uh, big marsupials dominate, and not just the big cat niche. They were there were also you know ones that, that dominated the, like the bone crushing niches and things like that. But they had a saber tooth uh, individual, and that's kind of uh, uh, a notion towards that that we have the the Tigre Dontero, uh, which is sometimes considered to be a surviving Sparsodon or a even a surviving saber-toothed cat. Now, other people seem to uh, indicate that maybe the sightings are correlated with uh, these striped, these other two striped individuals, the Peruvian tiger and the anomalous jaguar, which let's move right into. Were um, we actually have evidence of <laughs> and they are the so what are the peruvian tiger and the anomalous jaguar they are skulls of allegedly striped jaguars that were examined on a peer-reviewed science paper so um, yeah, let me pull that up here. This is the, so first, let's look at the figures real quick before I pull that up. I just want to show you that uh, the people who worked on it and stuff. So these are two skulls that were collected and, um, they were examined by none other than, than Darren Nash, who is also, he's a real zoologist, but also a cryptozoologist, um, and and likes to debunk and overturn these things. So if you like what I do here, a lot of it is based on the work of Darren Nash and just uh, putting, that's that's uh, a lot of what Cryptic Corner is founded on is, is uh, Darren Nash's uh, school of examining anonymous animal claims. So I owe a lot to him. It's anomalous. I may have missed. I, 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 yeah, I put anonymous there. I don't know why. I was. It's just a typo. That's me too. Not not anybody else. Um, my typo. Um. It just it. I was typing it in a, a little. Yeah, auto correct it to whatever was closest to. However, I misspelled anomalous, and I didn't. I picked the one that was anonymous. I'm sure. Uh, yeah hate my stupid human fingers and human brain and how they connect each other sometimes but it is what it is so looking at this these are again definitely like the like the onsa skull definitely robust pantherine skulls the problem with pantherine skulls is that there's a lot of uh, overlap between morphologies between groups it's hard sometimes to uh, distinguish a skull from what is a tiger to what is a jaguar to what is a lion. Those those three specifically. Um, and leopard, you throw leopards in there too because, you know, jaguars and leopards have a lot of morphological similarities, but not as much as it, the jaguars have with the bigger two. Um, and it shows in their skeletons. 
they're the species Panthera atrox, uh, sometimes called the American lion. Huge cat. The biggest, the biggest true pantherine that we know of that ever lived. The biggest. And it lived in, uh, in the Americas. And it was, uh, for a long time, it's been considered a true lion, Panthera leo atrox like the cave lion uh, of Europe and uh, in Asia, which is Panthera atrox spalia. Now, in the years since its, uh, its classification it's been, it has been called into question over whether it should be, uh, yeah, Panthera uh, onsa, or uh, yeah, Panthera onca uh, atrox, or even Panthera tigris atrox, because there's nothing in this morphology that indicates that it's more close related to lions, tigers, or jaguars, one or the other. And there's arguments about things involved in its morphology that puts it into, that could be placed into to each group, depending on how you want to classify it. So these skulls, uh, though, uh, spoilers, were found to fit well within the standard morphological dimensions of a regular old jaguar. So, yeah, n no, uh, no stripes. Uh, well, I'm going to say there weren't striped. There could be genetic conditions that are so rare that we, or that we don't have modern examples of them that could cause jaguars to produce stripes uh, uh, out of their, their reset, or roset genetics, but we just don't have any examples of it. So it's not to say that these weren't striped jaguars, but they were not any kind of um, unique species as far as the study goes. And let me just, I don't wanna, I, I'm not gonna read the study, I just wanna show you guys the study, so. Yeah, this is uh, this is the paper. Mystery big cats and Peruvian Amazon morphometric solve a cryptozoological mystery. Two big cats procured from hunters in Yanashaga National Park in Peru were reported as those of informally dubbed the striped tiger and anomalous drag jaguar. Dragwire? That'll be my drag queen name, the anomalous dragwire. Um, observations suggest that both skulls were distinct from those of jaguars associated descriptions of integuments did not conform to the species. And it has been implied that both represent members of one or two novel species. We sought to resolve the identity of the skulls using Morphometrics DNA could not be retrieved since both had been boiled as part of the defleshing process. We took 36 cranial and 13 mandibular uh, measurements and added them to the database, incorporating nearly 300 specimens of over 30 felid species. Linear discrimination analysis resolved both specimens as part of Panthera onca with high probability for cranial mandib mandibular data sets. Furthermore, the specimen exhibit the specimens exhibit characters typical of jaguars. If the descriptions of their patterning and pigmentation are accurate, we assume both individuals were aberrant. So, yeah, that they had some kind of genetic abnormality that we are not yet familiar with. Right. Um, so, last but not least on the docket for uh, Cryptic Corner this morning is our uh, speckled jaguar or white jaguar. Um, and these are ones that... Uh, that were for a long time considered speculative. And I just love that we had some born in captivity. So we were able to examine them and, uh, and explore their, uh, their this sort of uh, genetic 
abnormality that we don't get to see a lot, um, but is sometimes reported from nature, right? Now, uh, yeah, because for you know, decades they were reporting these creatures existing in the wild, and boom, we have some baby babies born in captivity that uh, that have this condition that was that we weren't sure um, how it would express. The thing is about these two, though, is I haven't heard anything new since since they were cubs. So they're in a German zoo. But yeah, I look up look for pictures of them, and I couldn't find any pictures of them as, as adults. This should be they should be adults by now. This was uh, it's been several years ago. Anyway, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to showcase these beauties here and. Uh, yeah, and just to let you guys know, up uh, next when we continue with our uh, mystery cats, it's going to be, uh, we're going to focus on mystery tigers. That's not going to be like the next episode or anything. Uh, I do have stuff planned for the next few episodes, so this won't be, this won't be that, but uh, this is going to be coming up, so we will have, I don't know if I'm going to combine the uh, mystery tigers with the mystery lions yet. I'm going to look at the, how robust of a, uh, of a foundation I can found for, or I, can, I can find for each, each group and see it, how many varieties there are and how many anomalies there are. And we'll decide that way. Now, uh, there are ones that are, there are specific ones, um, cat, mystery cats that I do want to focus on just the one individual, um, like uh, the Missouri, for example, for example, comes to mind. The uh, what's the other one? Uh, the Onza, yeah, the Onza is actually one that I considered that I initially included in this, but it's too different, too different for me to uh, to just lump together with the anomalous black jaguars and cougars and whatnot um so i thought it would deserve its own so that'll be covered too i was not gonna that, that's definitely not gonna be the next one though because i don't like to focus just on one uh area even though like i said i've focused heavily in this in this series on selena kyle like uh catwoman yeah but i i did i wanted to focus on South American, uh, the South American trifecta of, of mystery, I call them mystery jaguars, um, because I think most of them were jaguars. Some of them might have some pumas mixed in there, but for the most part, I think we're talking about jaguars. And uh, yeah, we've, we've done the, the big cats in Britain, which are fortunately mostly oversized house cats that uh, people see in a field from two miles away. And then um, we, did, we did the Appalachian uh black puma and we had videos that we looked at on that one and then ozark the ozark uh black cougar was posted just last week so that's fresh fresh in my content out there too if you're interested in that uh, this episode though yeah we covered quite a few of the anomalous uh big cats from south america there are more anomalous felines from South America, that we will get to as well, um, and more from North America too. We're not done up there. Uh, we haven't even we haven't even touched on Canada yet. Canada has its own. I think I can think of uh, at least two cryptid felines from Canada that that we have to cover still, and we've been to. Uh, we haven't been to Australia where they have cryptid felines. Of course, Asia has their own, uh, which we're gonna explore when we get to these tigers too and then oceania oceania has uh legends and myths about big cats or felids of some kind so <laughs> love me some black cougars uh you guys are so silly anyway so that's gonna wrap up that's gonna wrap up cryptic corner for us today and uh i hope uh or tonight, if you're watching this tonight. <laughs> but I hope that uh, all of you remember to be kind and take care. And uh, don't forget to turn, tune in for Live from the Hive tomorrow, uh, Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. For, uh, for my cryptic corner audience. Uh, 
Thank you so much. Please remember to be kind and take care. We'll see you next time.